In this new environment with interest rates finally sinking, what do you do with a stock like Lyft? Earlier this year, the ride-sharing company looked to be in bad shape. It was losing market share to Uber, struggling to pivot to profitability. Then in March, in March, they brought an experienced tech executive and CEO, David Risher, and he immediately started cutting costs, only laying off 26 percent of the workforce. You have to do what you have to do. Earlier this month, Lyft reported a top and bottom line beat with robust guidance. Stock actually tumbled nearly 6% in response, supposedly because their gross bookings and ride growth metrics fell short of Uber's. Wait a second. The self was overdone. Stocks rallied 16% since then. So could this be the beginning of a larger rebound, which you know I think it is? Let's check in with David Richard, CEO of Lyft, who's in here in person. Mr. Richard, welcome back to Mid Money. It is so good to be here, Jeff. How All are right. you? <laughs> well, I want to tell you something. I, I'm a nervous traveler. Okay. So I've got you. I hate being late. Mm-hmm. I always think I'm going to miss the plane. Okay. I'm scared to death. I'm, on, I'm waiting for the... Uh, you be asterisk R to show up. Yeah. Give me some certainty that maybe I'm using the wrong guy. Well, you are using the wrong guy, and here is why I can tell you that. So we announced something called the Guaranteed Airport Pickup. And to your point, everyone is stressed during That's... holidays. And the holidays should be so great. They're a time of getting together with your family. But, man, what time am I getting to the airport? Is the car going to pick me up? So on and so on. So, look, we say we guarantee we're going to pick you up. If we are more than 10 minutes late... We will pay you up to $100 in Lyft cash. That's enough for you to take one of those Ubers. It's a huge mistake for you to take, but there you go. No, okay, so these kinds of things are, no, we're no stranger with you. You have, you're an inventive person. Mm. Your background is about invention and creativity. Every one of the things, look, woman and connect. We can yep. just look at these things. You are just, it's a cauldron up there. <laughs> and, and not one of those crazy ones that we saw from some other guy who has a car coming. <laughs> well, tell me how you come up with these ideas and tell me if you think they're working. Because I know you're also a very tough benchmarker of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I do think they're working and I'll give you two uh, reasons for that. So number one, if you look at when I started, we were up 10% year on year in ride growth. Second quarter, I was there, we were up 17%. Now we're up over 20%. That's accelerating growth in a market where that is not always the case, number one. Number two, we're able to bring out new innovations. You mentioned Women Plus Connect. So this is a way for women riders and drivers to choose to ride with each other. And it's a game changer. If you've seen some of the social media on it, people love it. And it's understandable why. It feels safe. It feels comfortable. It feels like I've got a comrade in in the car. And then number three, let's talk about airports one more time. We've given about two and a half million rides just in the last couple of weeks, just to airports. Two and a half million rides. Guess how many? And I'll ask you the question. Out of those two and a half million rides, guess how many we were so late that we actually had to pay for your, your Uber? How many? Pick a number. All right. I'll say, I'll say 10 percent. 10 percent. So that'd be 250,000 rides. The actual number, 72 rides. 72, 72, per, 72 rides. actual, no, not... 72 rides. 72, 72 rides. rides. Yeah, yeah, 0.01%. So this is a rides. decent a bet by you. This is a decent bet. So the question of, or the answer to how do we come up with our ideas, we obsess over our riders, we obsess over our drivers, and we over-deliver. Well, I think this is really an important point to point out, that the way people have been incorrectly valuing your stock is, I don't mean to pick on anyone, but Jeffries has the, the standard. Uh, recap, accelerating but still losing ground, and of course that's a comparison to Uber. I, don't, I think all comparisons are fatuous. You're comparing yourself, and that's what matters. Yeah. And I, how would you grade yourself? Yeah. So I compare myself to what our customers want. Okay. That's what I do. And our thesis, to be clear, is customer obsession drives uh, enterprise of value. Customer obsession drives enterprise value. Yeah. The more we obsess over our customers, the bigger, more successful we're going to get. So I grade myself well. Why? Because I see Women Plus Connect. I see airport pickup. I see accelerating growth. I see drivers. We have 40%, 45% more driver hours now than we had a year ago. I was just going to point out, the 45, I was going to point that out because yeah. these are the kind of metrics people should be looking at. Yeah. You needed to reestablish this. And the way to reestablish it is more and more drivers. Not necessarily, I mean, I could ask you for adjusted EBITDA. It really isn't yet the right time. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It will be, to be clear. We're building a healthy, growing business. But the most important thing now is look at the inputs. I'll tell you one other thing. Nobody else knows. And this is something that most companies don't talk about. When I joined, if you look at how our employees are experiencing our company, okay, we run surveys, like most companies do, about every quarter. And our employee confidence level was low. It was low, a historic low level. And you can kind of understand why. It then grew. And then we just released another, or we just saw the results just yesterday of our most recent one. It is the highest it has been in four years, employee confidence intervals or index. What that tells you is that the thousands and thousands, 3,000 plus team members who work for Lyft are starting to believe. They believe in our purpose. They believe in our execution. That's a leading indicator. That 
you know, how well we're doing for our customers, our riders, our drivers. That's what people should be looking at, not EBITDA. That's down the road. Well, there's also a flywheel effect. I know an overdone term, but I look at the advertisers you have for Lyft Media. Yeah. I first thought maybe these would be, uh, you know, kind of bargain basement guys, guys, ch ambulance chasers. Mm. Apple, not an ambulance chaser. Apple's not an ambulance chaser. Not only that, they've re-upped and re-upped again. They're very consistent. And to be clear, what's happening here is they're recognizing you've got a person who's sitting in a car. The average number of times a person checks their Lyft app in the car is 10 different times. They look, oh, am I there yet? And so instead of checking your app over and over again, you're getting to play a game on Apple. You're getting a free, you know, uh, Apple uh, TV uh, Plus uh, subscription. It's really interesting to see, actually, even our riders are liking it. And by the way, you know who else benefits? No. Drivers. Drivers. When we do advertising and you're taking a ride, drivers actually get paid more, too. So when I meet my partner, David Faber, tomorrow, and he says, is that Lyft still around? Mm -hmm. Perhaps I should remind him that you are alive and doing better than this company has what, for many, in a, in a many while. years. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. I, I also, I can't help but mention, you have probably t taught more people, people that know this, uh, to be literate, to mm -hmm. read, than anyone on earth, mm -hmm. okay? And you don't talk about it. There are other people who brag about their charity. This. Is this actually an easier task, what you're doing, than teaching the millions of people to read as you did in Africa? For I really, I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, I don't know that it, which is easier. They both have their challenges, but they're both super interesting and energizing. I think people who lead with purpose, and I put myself in that yeah. category, have the best jobs in the world. And I think it's what brings companies along and it allows us to, to, to sort of be bigger than ourselves. So well, anyway, I'm having a great time. Yeah, I know this is, I don't want to conflate charity and making money, but I think that people should want to join you as you leave Lyft much higher. Appreciate Thank you that. so much to David Richard, the CEO of LYFT. You're good, man. <laughs> I'm you, gonna man. take you up on so your pledge. Look out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Coming up, if rates have peaked, where does real estate go from here? Part three of Kramer's series answers the big question of what if next.